everyone, in today's hand history, I have a hand from the deep run in the $1,700 buy-in circuit main event at the Horseshoe. This is with 15 people left. Um, the final 15 was very, very pro heavy. Um, my table was all pros. Um, so definitely a difficult tournament, which means I'm going to be definitely taking some close spots. Also at this point, I was either the shortest stack or the second shortest stack. So I'm also going to be willing to take a little bit thinner of situations in general. Um, so it is big blind 40k. I start this hand with 600,000 in chips. Uh, we are eight handed. And in mid position two is Jared Jaffe off of a 3 million stack. He's one of the top few stacks in this field. Um, he is a longtime professional for cash and tournaments. Um, so he's in mid position two and raises to 85k. And I am in the big blind with the 10 of spades and the eight of spades. So in the specific spot, um, he is on a deeper stack, but I think most of the stacks behind are 40 to 50 bigs effective. So I would expect his opening range to be probably something pretty similar to this, 25% of hands. Um, I could see him maybe being a tiny bit looser than this with the amount of ice and pressure he gets to apply, but I would expect him to be somewhere around here for the most part. Now, if we look at a defense range on this, uh, so 40 bigs, uh, big blind versus MP2. You can see here I'm supposed to defend around 62% of hands at this stack depth. Now what else we're going to look at is what I'm supposed to defend at say versus a 25 big blind stack open. So this is 62% of hands. Uh, so big blind versus MP2. So about 77% of hands so I get to be looser. And now we're going to look at versus a 15 big blind open. The reason why I want to look at each stack is because his opening range is going to be wildly different than what this 15 big blind effective uh, range is supposed to look like. Um, both in terms of his range is going to be wildly different, and then on top of that, my defense range should probably look a little bit different too. So he's opening a bit looser, gets to apply more pressure on me. I actually have to play a little bit tighter than theory here because of the amount of ICM pressure I'm under. Although being shallow versus open, um, it gives me a little bit, uh, I'm in less awkward of spots because of how shallow I am. You know, when I defend, I flop equity, I get to stack off with it. But the flip side of that is when he flops equity and I flop equity, he busts me a lot. So I definitely need to be very, very careful here. Um, and because of that, I'm definitely going to be defending a bit tighter than this. I actually think that first range that I saw, so the 77% is... 15 big blinds versus 15 big blind open. But if we go back to verse 40 big blinds, this 62% is probably a pretty good ballpark is where I'm actually going to be at. The exceptions being, of course, uh, so this obviously has not all in three bets. That part of my range is going to be pretty much spot on with with uh, 15. So this is everything that's a call here is probably a good example of what my calling range looks like. And now everything here is going to be a good example of my jam. So if we look at if we look at the red here, I'm probably taking all of these as shoves. Um, the exceptions is I would actually include, I think I would just jam all of that. Um, hmm. King, queen, king, jack, king, 10, queen, jack. Yeah, those I'm probably appealing. Uh, the jack 10, yeah, I love taking this as a shove. Uh, I'm probably just calling these as well. Um, I might jam 10-9 suited or queen-jack suited, but I do like these as calls. And then king-queen off and ace-10 off, I'm taking those as shoves as well. Uh, but for the most part, the rest of this range isn't too far off. Just like these offsuit things, I'm just not calling the vast majority of all of this stuff here. I just don't think these are going to be profitable with ICM. Um, any of these single gappers as well. I might call 10-8 offsuit. Um, yeah, these I would call, but I'm definitely not calling any of these single gappers. I'm definitely not calling any of these either. In large part, due to ICM. Okay, so he opens to 85K or just over a min raise, and I call in the big blind with my 10 of spades and the 8 of spades. And the flop is the 9 of spades, the 9 of hearts, and the 4 of diamonds. So I flop a backdoor straight flush draw. Um, I block 10 9, I block 8 9. Um, so I, I, my hand does flop a decent amount of playability. 
On this 994, obviously I don't get to lead here, so I am just going to be peer checking, and I expect him to be betting this essentially always. Um, actually, when he checks back, I would be very, very, very concerned that he just has like a full house or a nine or aces or something like that. Um, I would expect him to peer bet. If you look here, there he just hasn't peer betting. I would expect him to do, do this as well. Um, he might try some exploitive checkbacks, but I would just expect him to bet range. So he does do that. He bets 25% pot or 55K into a pot size of 230. And this is where I make a decision that I think uh, in game I thought might be fine theory. Um, I was pretty confident that it would work perfectly fine theory. But I also thought that my exact hand was largely going to be a check raise. I do think that is the case that I should largely be check raising. However, I called with my hand. We look here, yeah, theory does call a very small percentage of the time, which is good to see. I wasn't certain. The reason why I called here instead of going with uh, this large majority check raise is I actually thought if I called that it would look stronger. So let's say I check raise small. He's either going to assume I have a four or a lot of bluffs. Um, yeah, I might have some nine X, but he might expect me to trap those super often, even though theory does here just peer check raises nine X. Um, I thought calling would actually look pretty strong. That being said, I think if I had check raise small, I think that would be completely and totally fine as well. Um, it's, whether or not this is better, the small check raise is better, honestly, I'm not 100% confident. Um, so if you think uh, my call here is a little bit squirrely, even if theory does do it, please let me know. Anyway, so I decide to call. The turn is an offsuit eight, so eight of clubs, doogie board. Um, I actually kind of considered leading this. Um, the reason, even though theory doesn't at all, the reason why is since I thought my check call looks really strong, then I think he might be under bluffing this turn card. I wasn't 100% certain though. Um, I did think he would still barrel at it with like, you know, his queen jacks, queen tens, jack tens type hands. Um, but. I, I wasn't certain as to whether or not he would take those or if he would barrel other hands as well. So in this bot, I did strongly consider leading even though I knew it was just a pure check. And in game, I did check and then he bet 145K or about 40% pot. So this in-between size. Honestly, this in-between size has me a little bit worried. So I'm not 100% confident that he's going to be barreling enough here and then he picks a size that doesn't really exist in at least in in our tree. Um, also, thing about turns in general too is in position often goes a little bit larger for the most part. But being this shallow effective and being a Badugi board um, and being paired, obviously the smaller size is picked. Looks like somewhat often, which is kind of surprising. Versus barrel, I I just thought that this was a, a really really close spot. Um, I'm certainly not super duper duper thrilled and maybe because of that check raising this on the flop might have been a little bit better that being said when he does bet I don't think we can do anything outside of calling here I think it is a very clear call but I am certainly not excited and if he had triple barreled we would have been in a very very rough spot so he bets we call with our 10-8 but it looks like ooh, interesting huh yeah, so theory here is check jamming this for value and protection, but theory also assumes that our opponent here is going to be barreling correctly. Also, theory assumes that there is zero ICM pressure. I don't think either of those cases are going to be true here, so because of that, I thought I had a very, very, very easy call. I know, Kale's probably going to hop in at this point and say, Ryan, you say very too often, make some drinking joke about it, or something like that. Whoa, 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 hold on, buddy. Stay in your lane, my man. You stick to the poker. I'll be the one making the jokes around here. My God. Anyways, um, I decided to call. River, thankfully, was an offsuit king. Not that the suit matters. I checked, which I think I'm only supposed to do here. Yep. And then he checked back, which is great. Um... Yeah, if he had shoved, see, I just, I don't think he's going to be taking a lot of these hands as shoves, um, but I don't think he's going to be jamming this thing for value. 
If he had shoved it, it would have been a really interesting spot. Um, I'm sure my 10-8 theory is a call. I'm just curious. Yeah, obviously 10-8 theory is going to be a call versus a jam. But, yeah, I don't know if I, uh, if I would have called versus shove. I think if he shoves, he wins the pot. Um, instead, I got to win this pot, which was wonderful. Uh, it chipped up pretty nicely. Uh, and then I busted on uh, a not great... I did not. I did not win an all-in blind versus blind uh, with Ace Queen versus Queen Seven, which sucked. But uh, really deep run. I was very happy with it. I'm very happy with how I played. Even this hand, I think I played perfectly fine. A um, lot of stuff coming up this month for me uh, in March. I'm really, really, really looking forward to this big win series. I hope to have a lot of deep runs for y'all coming up. Um, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and healthy out there, and best of luck at the tables.